Around three months ago, the Pony Preservation Project began work on a new method of generating mayor voices. That method being a relatively new network at the time known as Sovitz SVC. As of now, it is currently our best way for generating singing mayor voices. Here's what that sounds like. I got a bucket full of mares and I ain't afraid to use it. So frowny face beware, cause I think you're gonna lose it. The ponies in a can and you'll find there ain't much to it. When faced with life demands, least you got your very music. So this is going to be a tutorial on the current PPP supported ways to run Sovitz SVC. Here we're just going to talk about basic setup and usage, not about stuff like workflow or tips and tricks. Before we go any further, it is worth noting that Sovitz SVC specifically is a singing voice conversion tool. This means that in terms of inputs and outputs, it takes in reference audio, and then converts that audio such that it sounds like it is being spoken or sung by another person. Cough, cough, allow me to demonstrate. Cough, cough, allow me to demonstrate. So if you're looking for a text-to-speech service, or something like Vocaloid where you can put in notes and words and expect the AI to sing it, this ain't it. The two main PPP-supported ways to use Sovitz SVC are through either Google Colab, which allows us to offload the processing work to Google's GPUs, or a local GUI program. Anyone who can run a modern web browser can run the Colab version. The main reason you would want to use the local version if you have the hardware to support it is that it offers a little bit more power, can perform faster than what Colab offers you depending on what hardware you have, and only needs to be set up once compared to Colab, which is a cloud service with temporary runtimes, and so has to undergo a somewhat lengthy setup process every time you want to run it. You may be wondering what kind of hardware you need to run this locally. Well, here are the requirements. You must be this tall to write. If you want to run this stuff locally, you're going to need about 8GB of system RAM, an NVIDIA GPU with at least 4 gigs of VRAM. Y'all play video games, right? Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone, right? There are ways to run this on CPU, and at least theoretically AMD GPUs work on Linux but not Windows. But CPU is significantly slower, and I don't have an AMD card to test on Linux. And for Mac users, I have no idea. I would assume it's similar to Linux, but I've never actually seen anybody do it. And I don't have a Mac to test on. So we're going to be talking about NVIDIA on Windows and Linux. Lastly, you're going to need about 12 gigabytes of disk space, plus about one gigabyte of disk space per speaker model that you want to use. For reference, I have about 40 gigabytes of voices currently installed on my computer. So if you did something as innocuous as going with Team Red on Windows, or maybe you're not ready to cough up that disk space, Colab is where it's at for you. By the way, even if your system does meet all of these requirements and you plan to run this entirely locally, I would still sit through this section because I'm also going to explain some things about usage here that I won't repeat in the others. Anyone who can run a web browser can run Sovitz SVC through Colab. As this is a Google product, it is probably best to run this through a Chromium-based browser. RIP Firefox users. Anyways, you can access the PPP Sovitz SVC Colab through the link shown in this slide. This is also posted in the description alongside the unshortened link just in case the shortened link stops working. In order to run all of this stuff, it's pretty simple, but it may require a bit of patience. In order, click on the Check GPU cell, wait for that to finish running. The Setup 1 cell, which will take the longest, about 8 minutes, just like the last one, and for all subsequent cells, wait for it to finish running. The Setup 2 cell, Download Content Vec. And after all of that is finished running, it is time for us to decide which voice models we want to download and install. For simplicity, we're only going to be using this cell, the Setup HF Download cell, in order to select voices for us to download and use. If you run this cell, a list of very wide buttons will appear, and clicking on each button will allow you to download and install the voice corresponding to each button. I would recommend that you decide which voices you want to download beforehand, and download them all in one pass. Because before we get to the actual voice conversion step, we're going to have to restart the runtime. Once we do that, this cell will no longer run properly until we run Setup 2 again, followed by Setup HF Downloads. Speaking of which, now we have to restart the runtime, due to some weirdness with Colab. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So just go to the Runtime drop-down menu at the top, and hit Restart Runtime. Okay, the dialog window. Go back to the bottom and run this last cell. This will open an interface from which we will do our voice conversion. It is at this point that we need a sound file that we want to convert. Preferably, this is clean input audio of a single voice either speaking or singing. You can make a recording in your favorite audio recording software. I'm using this amazingly high effort recording of myself. Mares, mares, mares. 
or if you're trying to make a cover of a song, you can isolate vocals using a service or software such as vocalremover.org. For Sofit's SVC, supported audio formats are Wave, MP3, Aug Vorbis, Aug Opus, and FLAC. Once we have our input audio, our next step is to use the Google Colab file browser to navigate to the input directory on the Colab file system. That will be the raw folder under the Sovitz SVC folder. Once we have navigated there, we can drag and drop our input file into the raw folder, OK the dialog, wait for it to finish uploading, the progress for which you will see at the bottom left corner of the screen. We can also open the raw directory in Colab just to double check that our file was uploaded. Now we're ready to hit the convert button. The first time we hit convert will take longer than subsequent runs. For me, that's around 30 seconds. We'll go ahead and fast forward that. Mares, mares, mares. Wow, amazing. So that's the very basics of how to convert audio. We can also use this drop down menu at the top to select which voice we want to use. Mares, mares, mares. The only other option on this interface that is really important for general use is the transpose. The transpose is how much the AI has to adjust the pitch of the input into the pitch of the output. The unit of the transpose is in musical semitones. For male to female voice conversion, because males typically have deeper voices than females, we commonly use a transpose of 12 because 12 semitones is equivalent to an octave. However, you may find that you might have to adjust the transpose. Let me give you some examples of what it sounds like when you use a transpose that is incorrect for your input audio. If I use a transpose of 0 here, I will be trying to make Applejack sing at the exact same pitch that I am, which is pretty deep. Mares, mares, mares. On the other hand, if I use a transpose of 24, I would be making her sing at an octave higher than what we originally heard. Mares, mares, mares. So if anything that you're generating sounds like that, that might be a sign that you want to adjust your transpose. If you are making a cover of a song, you will almost always want to use a transpose that is equivalent to an integer number of octaves, aka a multiple of 12. So you would want to use transposes of perhaps minus 12, 0, 12, or 24. Otherwise, your output vocals will not be in the same key as your input vocals. This concludes the section for basic usage of Sovitz SVC through Colab. There are some other things that you can do to make your generation sound better, but those are outside the scope of this video. Now, there are lots of people that get by just fine using Colab for Sovitz SVC 4. However, as mentioned in the beginning, it does have some drawbacks. Because it's a cloud service, eventually your session will time out, and then you will have to repeat the entire setup process if you want to use Sovitz SVC again. So, if you have the hardware to support it, and you're ready to move to the next level, let's talk about how you can install this stuff first on Windows. Because if you're a Linux user, unfortunately, you're a second-class citizen. Now, depending on how fast your internet is, you should expect this to take on the order of 1 to 3 hours. But the good news is that if everything works, you only have to do it once. Now, those of you who are acquainted with the Sovitz SVC landscape may know that there is another GUI program, Sovitz SVC Fork, which is much more mainstream, and in all likelihood works more consistently than the program described in this tutorial. But this one is an interface that I wrote, and I made the first commit 15 days before those guys made theirs, and this is best suited for my workflow because I actually use it, and there are tutorials for that other one already on YouTube, so yeah. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to navigate to the GitHub repository or the GUI program. Both of the links on this slide should take you to the same page, which should look like this. Once you're here, you want to go to the middle right of the page, click the tags thing under releases, and then select the most recent release. At the time of filming this, that was 0.3.0. Go down to the zip link and click on it to initiate the download. This zip will include some installer binaries and some handy dandy batch scripts for setup and running. Once you have your zip, extract it and open up the resulting folder. To start the setup, click on setup.bat. If you get a security dialog like this, go to more info and hit run anyway. Now in theory, at least, the script should install, if you don't have them already, the Microsoft Visual C++ runtime, NVIDIA CUDA 11.4, and so it's SVC sources, Python dependencies, and some pre-trained models that are used internally. Now the intent was for these to install one after the other, but as you'll see, the installations actually kind of start at the same time, and I don't know whether that's actually a problem or not. The Visual C++ runtime installation is going to run on its own, so meanwhile we can OK through the CUDA installation. Once you get to the part where asked whether you want an Express or Custom installation, I would just go with Express. Don't click on Custom like I'm doing on screen. 
I'm sure that all of those different components aren't actually needed, but I don't really want to figure out which ones I can take out and still have everything work. I will disclose that I'm not doing this from an entirely clean install, because I don't really want to figure out how to do GPU pass through through VM. I just okayed through this ominous looking Visual Studio thing. I don't know whether that would be a problem for a clean install. Hopefully it won't. Anyways, now you can go do something else while you wait for all of this stuff to finish installing. Which I didn't actually film. Hopefully I'm not skipping anything important. This is what it looks like when it starts downloading all the stuff, including Python dependencies, for so if it's SVC proper. Sped up by 100,000%. Wow, that went by quickly. So hopefully if everything's installed properly, we can hit run.bat, break out of the security dialog, and wait for our GUI to load up. For me, that takes a bit over 10 seconds. So if this window pops up, it means that everything is probably installed correctly, but you'll notice that we have no voices, because we haven't downloaded any yet. So let's exit out of the program. You're gonna have to exit out of the terminal window as well. Just press any key to continue. Oh, uh, where's the any key? We're gonna run modeldownloader.bat, and this will, theoretically at least, allow us to download models used by the Pony Preservation Project and hosted on Hugging Face. If you get a dialogue about a credential helper, I select Manager Core and always use this from now on at the bottom left. Eventually, after downloading a bunch of stuff, we should arrive at this window, where we can check off any of the models that we want to download, and then hit the button at the bottom to download them all in one go. Make sure that you select every model that you want to download first. This download is blocking, so you will not be able to select new stuff to download in the GUI until the download finishes. Why? Because I'm lazy. Now you can download models outside of this tool from online. Inside the Sovitz SVC folder, there is a models directory, which contains folders holding the files for each voice. So if you download speaker models from online, that is how you should organize them to work with this GUI. Anyways, once our downloads have finished, we can exit out of the downloader window, and we are finally ready to run our GUI for real. So there's a lot of options here, we're only going to go through the very basics. Firstly, if you have a microphone on your computer, you can record straight from inside the interface, which can be useful for experimenting or doing quick fixes. You can preview the recording. Mares. 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 If you think it's good, hit push less output to Sovitz SVC, and that will load our recording into the left section, where we'll do all of our conversion. Again, as we discussed in the collapse section, set the transpose to something appropriate, in this case 12 for male to female. Then we can go to the bottom and hit convert. You'll see that stuff starts chooching in the terminal window to the left. Mares. 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 And that's it. A few more things that I want to note. You can actually drag and drop input files into the GUI if you drag them onto the Files to Convert button, or you can click on the Files to Convert button directly to open a file dialog and navigate to the input files that you want to use. Processing multiple files is supported, but you can only preview one at a time. Now, where did the output go? It's under the Results directory inside the Soviet's SVC directory. But, and this is my favorite feature, you can actually drag and drop the output file from the Play button of the Preview widget. And if you work with a DAW, you can also drag and drop the audio straight into a DAW. Kinda sick. And to my knowledge, you can't do that with a web UI. So, eat your heart out, web UI devs. Although I hear that you can actually do it with Electron. But nobody likes Electron. And that concludes setup and basic usage for Windows. Linux users, you still here? Yeah, we're gonna break out the terminal for this one. Remember, you chose this life. Firstly, I hope that you have your NVIDIA drivers working, which may or may not be a massive pain in the ass. I'm not sure if you need to install the CUDA Toolkit separately, but for some reason my install seems to work even though there's no CUDA Toolkit installed on my system. Next step in the process, if you don't have it already, install Miniconda. If you don't know what this is, basically it's a way to create isolated Python environments with different Python versions in order to prevent weird dependency conflicts. If you don't want to contaminate your pristine Python install, highly recommended that you do this. Next up, we are creating a Conda environment for Sovitz SVC. I'm naming it Sovitz 4 and giving it a Python version of 3.8. Now that our environment is created, we activate the environment. A brief aside, I should specify that every time you want to run Sovitz SVC this way, you will have to activate the environment. You can write up a shell script that will allow you to use that environment to run the Sovitz SVC stuff using the conda run syntax shown on screen. Anyways, back to installation. Now we're going to use git to clone the Sovitz SVC repository. Then we change directory into the repository, and then we can use pip to install our requirements. I don't know if the extra index URL is actually needed anymore, but I do believe that you need that if you're doing the equivalent installation on Windows. 
Since this is going to install Torch, it could take a while depending on how fast your internet is. Now all of our Python dependencies are installed. There's one last thing that we do need to download, and that is the pre-trained checkpoint for content vec. So you can download this if you go to the GitHub page and go down to the required download section, or you can control F for checkpoint underscore best underscore legacy underscore 500, and you can download that. Or of course, you could just wget it directly from the URL. In any case, once you have the pre-trained checkpoint, here I'm just navigating into the Sovitz SVC repository, ultimately the pre-trained checkpoint has to go into the Hubert folder. Now technically at this stage our install should be working, but we also need to download voices. Ensuring that the Sovitz 4 environment is active, run python downloader underscore gui dot pi. It's going to download some stuff and then we'll get this window which will allow us to select and download PPP voice models. As mentioned in the windows section, this download is blocking, so make sure that you select everything that you want to download first. Now I should note that this downloader does create directories that are outside the Sovitz SVC repository. I don't remember exactly why I did this, but it happens. So if you want to keep things clean, maybe you want to keep the cache repositories and Sovitz SVC directories inside another folder. Again, ensuring our conda environment is active. In order to run the actual GUI, we just cd into Sovitz SVC and run python inference underscore GUI2.py. Why 2? Because technically it's the second one. Now technically this should be the same GUI as is on Windows, so to keep myself from being redundant, if you want to know how to use the GUI, I would just refer you to the Windows section on that topic. Mares, mares, mares. And that's it, go out and make some content.